Welcome to this technical guide on setting up the ATP standard curve and controls for all ATP bioluminescence assays from Hemogenics. My name is Ivan Rich and I'm the CEO of Hemogenics. I'll be accompanying you on this presentation. All Hemogenics ATP bioluminescence assays, regardless of whether you are measuring hematopoietic cells, immune cells, mesenchymal stem cells or other stem cell types, Explanted cells from different organs and tissues or cell lines include ATP standards and controls. Performing the ATP standard curve and controls is an integral part of all Hemogenics ATP bioluminescence assays. We want you to get the best and most meaningful results possible. And to do this, it is necessary to calibrate and standardize your assay. But before showing you how to, do how to do this, let me briefly review the assays to which this applies and the principle upon which all of our ATP bioluminescence assays are based. This slide shows you the, uh, the ATP bioluminescence assays that incorporate ATP standards and controls. They include the Cameo 96 and all of the HALO assays for hematopoietic cells immunoglow assays for immune cells and luminesc assays for mesenchymal stem cells. Stem glow, stem clone and neuroglow assays are for primary stem cells and stem cell lines. XV prime uh, glow and XV prime clone and hepatoglow assays are for ex vivo primary explanted cells and the CL glow assays are for cell lines and tumor cells. The principle of measure measurement for all of these assays is shown in this slide. All living cells produce chemical energy in the form of intracellular ATP. When cells proliferate or are inhibited from proliferation by cytotoxic drugs, changes in the ATP concentration occur that correlate directly with cell proliferation, cytotoxicity, cell number and even apoptosis. After incubation of the cells the ATP is released by cell lysis and this reacts with the uh, luciferin and luciferase reagent to produce a bioluminescence um, signal in the form of light which is measured in a plate luminometer. But before any sample is measured, the assay is calibrated and standardized. There are several reasons for this. It ensures that both the instrument and reagents are working correctly. It calibrates the instrument and it standardizes the assay. It allows the results to be converted from the instrument output, which is in relative luminescent units or RLUs, to standardized ATP concentrations. This allows results to be compared between samples and different assays over time. It also allows for assay validation. At Hemogenics, we believe that calibrating and standardizing an assay is one of the most important procedures you can perform to ensure that you are getting the best results. Before you start measuring samples, we suggest that you perform an ATP standard curve and a, a couple of times so that you become familiar with performing this part of the assay and using the instrument. Your goal here is to produce results that are within specific ranges. I shall show these ranges at the end of the presentation. They are also in the manual you received with your kit. If the results from the ATP standard curve are within the required ranges, you can progress to, the, to measuring your samples. Before we get started, let's just summarize what you'll need to perform this part of the assay. Laboratory gloves are important because ATP is present on the skin. So uh, it's very important that you wear gloves for all of these uh, procedures. Uh, you'll need a base medium that is the same uh, as that used for cell culture. 1.5 milliliter vials or 5 milliliter tubes with caps for the ATP serial dilution will also be required. Pipette tips and calibrated single channel pipettes, preferably electronic pipettes, uh, will be used. 
as well as an 8-channel calibrated pipette, again preferably an electronic pipette. A reagent reservoir wide enough for an 8-channel pipette, a vortex mixer, and of course the instrument, the luminometer. The ATP bioluminescence assay kit you obtained should have been stored at minus 20 degrees Celsius. First remove a vial of ATP standard and a high and low control from the assay box in the freezer and let, it, let the contents thaw at room temperature. Also remove a bottle of ATP enumeration reagent from the freezer and let that thaw. Then label five vials or tubes that will be used to serially dilute the ATP standard. Depending on the expected proliferation of the cells, an ATP standard curve can be performed from 0.01 micromolar to 1 micromolar or from 0.03 micromolar to 3 micromolar ATP. It is important that your samples lie somewhere on that curve. They should not be outside the curve. Now dispense the correct amount of medium into each vial. The amount of medium is given in the manual. When the ATP standard and controls have thawed, mix the contents thoroughly using a vortex mixer. It may be necessary to rapidly centrifuge the contents if any liquid has been caught in the lid of the vial. Then prepare each ATP standard concentration using the procedure described in the kit manual. Accurate dispensing is very important. In addition, always change the tip after dispensing each ATP concentration. After each ATP concentration of the standard dose response has been prepared, mix on a vortex mixer before continuing with the next dilution preparation. Continue this serial dilution preparation with mixing between dilutions until all of the ATP dilutions have been prepared. Once the ATP standard curve dilutions have been prepared, take out one of the non-sterile 96 well plates provided with the kit. Dispense 0.1 milliliters of the medium alone in the first four wells of the first column of the plate, that is wells A1, B1, C1 and D1. This will provide results for the ATP background. Directly underneath dispense 0.1 milliliters of the lowest ATP standard concentration in the last four wells of the column, that is E1, F1, G1 and H1. Continue dispensing 0.1 milliliters of each ATP standard concentration into each of the following four replicate wells until all of the first three columns of the plate have been filled. In this picture, 0.1 milliliters of the low ATP control has been dispensed into the first four replicate wells of column 4. The high ATP col uh, control has been dispensed into the four replicate wells directly below the low ATP control. Now the first four columns of the plate have been dispensed. The next ATP standard curve and controls will be dispensed from column 5 to column 8. The last set of, eight of uh, standards and controls will be dispensed from column 9 to column 12. In this way, three ATP standard curves and controls can be performed on a single 96 well plate. Notice also that the contents of the ATP enumeration reagent have also been poured into a reservoir that is wide enough for an 8-channel pipette. Once the ATP enumeration reagent has thawed, mix gently by inverting the bottle, taking care not to cause bubbles. Fit an 8-channel pipette with clean tips. Take up 0.1 milliliters of the ATP enumeration reagent into each tip. Now, holding the pipette at a slant and just above the surface of all eight wells in the first column, dispense the contents of each tip into each well. 
You'll notice that when the ATP enumeration reagent is added, the color of the medium changes from red to yellow. Now comes the most important step, mixing. Although this is important for, AT, for the ATP standard curve, it is even more important for ensuring that the cells are mixed properly with the ATP enumeration reagent, because otherwise the cells will not lyse properly and you'll get erroneous results. Holding the pipette at a slight slant, place the tips of the 8-channel pipette in the center of the well and withdraw 0.1 milliliters. Keeping the tips under the surface of the liquid and without moving the pipette, dispense the contents of each tip back into the well. Mix three times in this first position. Now move the pit pipette to position two and repeat the process. Repeat this process for all five tip positions shown in the diagram. Discard the tips once all the mixing has been completed. Continue this process for all columns making sure that the mixing procedure is performed correctly and that new tips are used for each column to avoid any contamination from one well to another. Once ATP enumeration reagent has been added to all the wells and mixed, replace the lid. You can either transfer the plate to a drawer and incubate in the dark for two minutes at room temperature or you can transfer the plate to the plate luminometer without the lid and incubate uh, in the dark for two minutes also at room temperature. In this picture the 96 well plate with the ATP standard curve has been placed in the luminometer without the lid and will be incubated in the dark for just two minutes. It's important that you set up the instrument prior to performing any measurements. Setting up the instrument is described in detail in the assay manual. This picture shows that we've already measured the background ATP. Those are wells A1 to D1. And we are now in the process of measuring the ATP for the standard curve. Other instruments may not have the ability to perform this, uh, these operations automatically. In this case, the plate configuration will have to be entered into the instrument and the results will be exported uh, usually to an Excel file. This picture shows the ATP standard curve that is produced and graphed automatically by the software controlling the instrument. Our plate luminometer is a molecular devices LMAX with the Softmax Pro software. You will notice that we have plotted the points as a linear regression, but it is important that this is a log-log linear regression according to the equation log y equals a plus b times log x. There are important reasons why this is used. They're explained in the assay manual. At the bottom of the picture you will see the parameters for b, which is the slope of the linear regression, and r squared, which is the goodness of fit of the regression. We now come to the parameters that are necessary uh, and allow you to continue with measuring the samples. The first parameter you'll see is the coefficient of variation between the replicates, which should be equal to or less than 15%. The linear regression goodness of fit should be equal to or greater than 0 0.995. The linear regression correlation coefficient should be equal to or greater than 0 0.997. The linear regression slope should be 0 0.937 with a range of 0 0.796 to 1.07. The low ATP control should be around 0 0.05 micromolar and the high ATP control should be around 0 0.7 micromolar. 
the standard curve and control parameters must lie with these per within these parameters to ensure that the assay will measure the samples accurately and correctly. You're now ready to start performing the ATP bioluminescence assays. So this concludes the technical guide on setting up the ATP standard curve and controls for a hemogenics ATP bioluminescence assays. If you need any assistance, no matter how small, please contact us. We're here to help you. Thank you.